Praise the Lord, everybody. I pray that you guys have had an amazing week. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Victory Christian Assembly, the virtual service, the virtual victory. Once again, I'm your worship leader. This is Bryant here. I just pray God's blessings upon everybody. I pray that everybody has had an amazing week. Whether it was challenging, whether it was difficult, you are still here standing. If you are hearing this, you are still standing. So continue to give God the praise and continue to press for the prize of the high calling. I am so excited for what today's service is going to provide and going to bring because today is another day for us to spiritually be fed. And so I just pray that you guys are excited about what is to come. But really quickly, what I wanted to share with you guys was something that I was reminded from something I said um, months ago. It comes from the scripture Isaiah 43 verses 14 to 19. Scripture says, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring down the fugitives, all the Babylonians, in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your king. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the seas, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the waste lands. What I was encouraged that I, I spoke about months ago and it encouraged me once again, and I hope that it encourages you as well, is to forget the former things that, that you believe that God was at the, the, um, the, the top of his game with in your life. You know, think about the things that God has brought you out um, all your family is that continues to be covered, you know, continuing to see um, the promises of God in your life. All of those different things that God has provided for, you know, the things that God has made a way out of no way for you to excel in your ministry. God is saying, don't even dwell just on those things. Don't just think that that was man. That was the best thing that God can do. Because God is saying, guess what? I have something better for you. I have something greater that was that's even going to top what you saw before. He talks about the story um, about how the Israelites crossed over the Red Sea and how they thought that that was the biggest thing that God could ever do, saving them from five plus hundred um, um, uh, people that were getting ready to attack them. And so many of us are like, wow, that was so amazing. And God says, that's not even the, 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 the cap of my ability. And so I encourage somebody to just think about the things that God has done and prepare and be excited about what is about to come. Because what you thought, like the song says, you ain't seen nothing yet. You know, I encourage you guys to be prepared, continue to read your word, continue to pray, continue to be active worshipers and, and, and Christians to God's people, because God is getting ready to do something great in your life. And the great thing about it is, is he's like, do you not see it coming? It's on the way. Your breakthrough is on the way. Your, your blessing, your miracle, the things that you have been praying for years ago. He's like, it's on the way. It's coming. It's already in the delivery uh, 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 train station. Like It's getting ready to come. I can't explain how exciting this feels to know that the things that you've been praying for, the things that you were like, oh, maybe not. God is saying, mm -mm, that's not how I work. I am about to give you something that is far greater than what you've ever thought. Healing, um, 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 victory, whatever, a blessing for your family, a blessing for friends, a blessing for neighbors, co-workers, your environment, your community. God is getting ready to give you another blessing, another miracle that far outseeds what he's ever done for you before. So I pray right now that you guys are excited and I pray right now that you are ready to receive what God has in store for your life. Amen.
Forget the old stuff. Prepare for the new. Amen. Well, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to get ready for our ministry right now. I pray that you guys um, uh, be active worshipers with us as Alpha Praise comes and presents our musical selection today. God bless. Bless his name today. This is my prayer. Like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. Like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. Come on and sing that with me.
gently rest upon my heart. Praise God, man. Shout out to Alpha Praise. Um, thank you, Elder Mark, for, for helping lead us in worship like the dew in the morning. Come on now. It gently rests upon our hearts. And so I pray right now that every day that we wake up, that we just feel refreshed. We just feel, we just feel alive to know that God is continuing to set upon our hearts and to give us the things that we need to make it through the day. Amen. Amen. So right now, what we're going to do is we're getting ready for our sermon. And I pray right now that you guys continue to pray. As PJ says, pray for our leadership team. Continue to pray for our pastor and our first lady. Continue to pray for our church. Continue to pray for God's people around the churches. And so right now, get your pencils out, get your phone off the charger, get ready to take some notes and some nuggets that's going to help you throughout the rest of the week. As we present our sermon, I present to you, Bishop Melvin A. Jenkins. God bless. Are you ready for the word today? I hope so, because today is a special day in the sense that it's the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. We want to get into the Word. Um, hopefully everyone's having a wonderful weekend. Uh, I guess this is the last weekend of the summer, so to speak, uh, in that it's Labor Day. Um, I don't know if you all have any plans or you're going to continue to shelter in place, but at any rate, I hope you enjoy and are blessed uh, by today's service. Um, I want to also invite you to check out Christ Community Worship Center's service, um, where your pastor, your bishop, is going to be preaching there as well. Oh, isn't technology amazing? I can preach in two places at one time. And so I plan to do just that. Uh, I think their service starts around this same time. So as soon as you're done here, I invite you to go over on Facebook to CCWC, Christ Community Worship Center in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, uh, where Pastor Marvin Reeves is the pastor. So we're excited about what God is doing over there as well. So let's get into the Word, shall we? Turn with me, if you will, into the book of Genesis, chapter number 11. Genesis chapter number 11, we're going to be reading the first six verses of Genesis 11, and it reads as follows. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. I want to use as a subject, considering those six verses there, the power of one. The power of one. And we're going to use, consider uh, the one as it applies in the scripture here when God says that the people are one, they are of one language and they are of they are one. And so we want to look at exactly what that exactly means, because what God is trying to say to us about that particular passage is that here were a group of people and they weren't focusing on God. I can tell you that uh, this whole Tower of Babel story, Tower of Babel story has to do with the fact that some people got together and they decided they were going to build a monument unto themselves. It was kind of like an idol type thing. And they were going to basically establish themselves uh, in that land. And, and they said they were going to build a skyscraper or a, 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 a tower that reached all the way to heaven. And the Bible says that God looked down upon it and he wasn't so much looking at the tower itself as they began to build. But the scripture says that they began, he, they, he looked down on them and he said that indeed the people are one and they all have one language and this is what they begin to do. Now, therefore, nothing that they propose shall be withheld from them. And so what we want to focus on is when God said the people are one, the literal translation 
from the Hebrew word that is translated one, the literal translation is united. The people are united. And so in the sense that the people understanding that when they came together and set themselves on a goal and were united in that purpose, I'm not saying everybody had to agree with each other, but they were united in the purpose united in the plan, united in the will, united in their, 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 the, the actual actions that they carried out. The Bible says that God looked down upon that and said, because of the fact that they're united in this, there's nothing that's going to stop them. If they're determined to build a, a tower to heavens and become some kind of an idol or turn it into some kind of an idol, there's nothing that's going to stop them from doing that. And so the Bible says, we all know the rest of that story. Scripture says that God said, listen, I've got to confound their language I've got to cause them to start not understanding each other so that I can break this apart because if they, if they stay united like this, they're going to establish exactly what they plan to do. Now, what does that have to do with us today? Well, I want you to know that this issue of unity is something that's very important. You can look in our nation, you can look in our churches, you can look all over the place, and everywhere you go, there is disunity. Yeah. Everywhere you go, the, the country is falling apart. Seems like the church is divided on certain things and people are, have their positions and, and are kind of dug their heels in, in these various positions. But I want you to know that if we understood what God was trying to say to us through all of this, that if the people definitely got united behind one thing, mm -hmm. understanding that there is necessary, it's necessary for unity in order for anything to get done. The Bible says to us in Psalms 33 verses verse 1, it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren, men and women of God, to dwell together in unity. Goes on to talk about the fact that it's like the oil that was poured upon the head of Aaron and runs down to his beard all the way down. And so what he's trying to say is unity in, in, in the church, unity among the brothers and sisters of Christ has to do with the anointing, the oil that flows. It is very important that we understand that unity is what's going to make, really be, make us work. Yeah. Unity is what's going to keep us strong. Unity is what's going to keep us together. We don't have to worry. I'm not saying you have to agree with every single word that I say, but let me tell you, anytime there is unity, there is strength. What happens is the enemy comes in and he always does this. He comes in and he tries to divide. The scripture says that, that a house divided against itself. Look at the book of Mark chapter 3 verse 24 and 25. A house divided, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. A house divided against itself will not stand. And so we need to understand that division is definitely what's going to destroy us. And I want you to know something very well here. Anytime you have a force that is trying to divide people, that force is weakening those people. I've been to many churches, and one time I went to a church, and I visited the church, and one of the brothers in the church took me out to breakfast. He said, said Pastor, I want, to, I want you to go out to breakfast. So I, I asked the pastor, could I go out to breakfast with this man? He was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. You know, I'm not going to go. You Just you and him go. And I sat down to breakfast with this guy, and within about five minutes of the conversation, he began to talk about the pastor, began to criticize the pastor, began to find things wrong with certain people in the leadership of the church and I was terribly uncomfortable because I realized this was not a united man this was a divisive man and as I sat there and listened to his nonsense I began to say to myself I don't want any parts of this guy I'm not going to connect with this guy and let me tell you over time the guy disappeared he left the church and I knew it was going to happen because he was not united in purpose Again, I'm not saying you have to agree. Let me tell you, it's important that we understand that united, being united with someone doesn't necessarily mean that you agree. Yes. We're united. My wife and I are united in marriage. I can assure you that once or twice we have disagreed about some things. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is that we are, we are focused on uniting, being united about our purpose, our plan, our vision, our ultimate goals. And God said, listen, in the church, we need unity. If you're, you have a ought against your brother, you have a problem with somebody in the church, clear it up because unity is where our strength is. And God had to explain to the people at the Tower of Babel, if I let you stay as unified as you are, there's nothing that's going to stop you from doing. And I'm saying that's the kind of power we need, except with God as our head. If we understand how important it is to be unified, we will not let anything divide us. No political decisions, no, 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 no racial decisions, no, 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 
all the things that are going on around us, financial decisions, I am unified with my brother. I stand with my brothers and sisters. I stand in unity because I know that unity is strength. Yes. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Come together. Listen, I know that we're separated by this whole COVID business, but let me tell you, make a phone call. Put out a Zoom call. Get on face social media. Get in touch with people. Socially distance and, and socialize with folks. Get together because unity is where our strength is. We need to recognize that our strength is in our unity. The power of one is unlimited. God said, listen, I do greater things. I go to the Father, I do greater things. So God gives you the Holy Spirit. He gives me the Holy Spirit. And he says, I want you to come together. But understand something, that our unity is so important that the enemy would try to divide us on every hand. Mm -hmm. You heard the old expression, divide and conquer. And conquer. Amen. You heard the old expression, united we stand, divided we fall. Amen. And those things are absolutely true. They are based in scripture. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that even though we don't see each other all the time, I want to make sure that we're still unified. And if you have any questions or problems with somebody, let's get it cleared up now. Okay? Let's get that ironed out because let me tell you, this is very, very important. I'm concerned about people that sow division. Let me tell you, the scripture says that God hates someone that sows discord among the brethren. He hates it. Why? Because he knows that that discord, that division weakens us. God wants us strong. God wants us powerful. Yes. God wants us mighty. God wants us people of anointing. Let me tell you, that comes through uniting one with another. Yes. The scripture says also that where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. And goes on to say that two are better than one. And goes on to say that a threefold cord is not easily broken. What do you mean? You said two are better than one. What are you talking about a threefold cord? But he said, where two or three are gathered, there I am. So therefore, when two come together in unity, the third fold of that cord, the third cord of that fold is Jesus Christ. He's in the midst. And so when we come together in unity, Jesus is right there. And as long as we have Jesus in the middle, let me tell you, a threefold cord is not easily broken. Let's not let anything come between us. Let's not let anything divide us. We are, are the body of Christ. Let's not let the body be divided. No schisms, no separations, no divisions. Unity is strength. We have power and the power is in one. It's time to pray. Um, scripture says to us, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. There are, I know there are needs. I know there are issues. I know there are concerns. I'm going to ask that you, if you have a need, I'm just going to ask everyone to kind of bow their heads and close your eyes and lift your hands up to the Lord. If there's something you need specific, I want you to lift your hands and I want you, as I pray, I want you to pray. Uh, everybody here has an opportunity to reach out to God. Everybody here has the opportunity to touch the very hem of his garment. So I'm saying to all of us, if you have a need right now, <clears throat> lift your hands in the air, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, lift your hands and uh, pray with us. I'm going to pray a general prayer, but you pray specifically for what it is that you need. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you today. We are so appreciative of all the things you're doing in our lives. Now, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to once again come into your presence. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for this time wherein we can worship together. It's not the way we always expected it to be, but you know what? You're still here in the midst, and we are united in this purpose. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity, God, to come before you. We thank you, Lord, for all the things that you've already done for us, all the blessings you've bestowed upon us. Lord, you've been so gracious and so good. We are so appreciative of all the things that you have done. Now, Father, there are various needs as we look out over this broadcast. There are various needs, various households have issues, <clears throat> various concerns. Lord, whether it's a physical issue, whether it's a financial issue, an emotional issue, Lord, a family issue. Father God, in the name of Jesus, an academic issue. We thank you, Lord, for even now touching the lives of your people. Yes. And as I pray, Lord, this general prayer and cause your presence to come into this broadcast, I thank you that you are touching individual households, individual families, individual lives in the name of Jesus. I come against every work of hell, every work of the devil that would try to destroy the people of God. Mm. I bind right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for an opportunity, Father God, to Lord continue to, to bless your name, bless your holy name. And I thank you that even now, Lord Jesus, you're preparing great and mighty testimonies, Lord, that I haven't see, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. Lord, it hasn't even come into our minds, our hearts, the things that you have in store for us. I thank you, God, that you are touching these lives. You're causing your people to be blessed on every hand. I thank you. You're lifting 
lifting every head that is bowed. Lord Jesus, someone might be suffering with depression and, and, and feel a lack of self-esteem. I thank you that you're touching and lifting that person to a higher place in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, for, Lord, our, our extended families, our loved ones, Lord. Blessings upon each and every one in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for causing an outpour of your spirit. Lord, somebody that, that is struggling with their job, Lord Jesus, I thank you for causing a new opportunity to come along in Jesus' name. I just declare it right now. We thank you for victory in all things. We just come against every work of hell, and we declare every work of victory in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Are you ready for offering today? It is definitely offering time. Uh, thank God for the opportunity to give. I'm smiling because God loves a cheerful giver. And the word cheerful actually means hilarious. So it's hilarious time. It's time to smile, time to be happy. Uh, let's prepare to give. Uh, Elder Mark's going to come with some instructions, as, as always. And most of you all already know the routine. Most of you all have been so good and so gracious to the church. And we, we, we bless the name of the Lord on your behalf. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you for this time to give. We pray your blessings upon the gift and the giver. Multiply the seed and the fruit. Give back to every single one of your people, 30, 60, 100 fold. In Jesus' name, let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. If you'd like to give electronically to Victory, you can do so in a number of ways. From your web browser on your computer, tablet, or phone, use the URL easytithe.com forward slash VCA. This will take you directly to our Easy Tithe giving portal. Choose the Give Now tab to enter the fund you'd like to contribute to and plug in the amount. You can also access the same portal by texting. Text the word GIVE to area code 724-204-1995. As an alternative, you can download the dedicated Easy Tithe app on either the iOS or Android platform. You can also use Cash App. Here is our info, dollar sign Victory PJ. Lastly, you can access our Easy Tithe giving portal through our website, www.myvictory.org.
As a reminder, we are not holding in-person meetings at the church as we comply with guidance from the CDC to shelter and home. You can stay in touch with Victory in a number of ways electronically. Visit our website, myvictory.org. There you can find out more about us and check out our blog. Also, follow us on social media such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Download our app for your mobile device on either the iOS or Android platforms. There you can view the latest sermons, check out music and ministries, post a prayer request, or visit our chat room. We hope you've had an excellent worship experience today. Have a great week, and in all you do, we pray that you walk in the victory God has designated for you. Be blessed, and we'll see you next week.